Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey there, welcome to Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with our fabulous uh, love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I have, I feel great this morning. I got a great night's sleep, S slept <laughs> right through, solid. I feel like I could do anything. But you know, John, <laughs> before we let, turn this over to Michelle, I have to admit that I had some great sleep last night also about three times. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm at an age where I, I like to get up and, you know, check the house uh, from time to time and then make sure the bathrooms are okay. And I, yeah. I, I travel around a little bit. But um, it wouldn't have anything to do with your prostate, I don't think. But uh... I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> is there um, uh, sleep is important. And um, uh, I, I have to tell you that I do take naps from time to time. Uh, but unless I really yes. crawl under the covers, I don't get into a deep sleep. But um, sleep is important, and uh, sometimes I miss it, and other times I feel like you, like Tony the Tiger. I feel great. So uh, <laughs> what, what, what is it to the sleep thing, Michelle? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously we all know, you know, that sleep is very important to health and um, wellness and everything, and also just that, you know, as we age, it does get more difficult to get more sleep. And one of the things I, you know, I've noticed just in working with people is that, you know, this can be a challenge in a couple, basically getting enough sleep together and how you do that. And the question is, do you still want to be sleeping together? That's the other thing to consider. So I, I have some statistics that I thought would be really interesting to share. So oh, good. nearly, yeah. So nearly two thirds of couples prefer solo sleeping than sharing a bed with a partner. Wow. But 32% are afraid to raise the issue of sleeping alone with their partner. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, That's uh, interesting. Any particular reasons why they want to, you know, is it because the partner snores or other things? We Right. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, in the individual couple, there can be many things. So it's important to look at, you know, so of course, I'll have to say I have a bias as a relationship coach that I'm always wanting to foster, you know, a couple's intimacy and connection and closeness. And, you know, there's nothing like, you know, sleeping in the same bed, right? I mean, there's a yummy, wonderful thing about snuggling before you go to sleep and when you wake up and it's warm and cozy and, you know, you can kind of have some skin to skin time, depending if you sleep you know, with pajamas or not, you can always start skin to skin and then put your pajamas on. So, so there's something really yummy about sleeping together. So obviously I, you know, I'm all for it. However, it doesn't always work for everybody. And so that's the question to discover as a couple, like, is this working for us, both of us? And then if not, how do we address that? Well, wait, 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 bail us out real early on this thing. Let's bail out everybody in the audience. You're going to hopefully say, but it's okay to not sleep together as long as you get enough sleep. So tell us, tell us it could be okay. Oh, well, absolutely. So, cause I mean, basically, you know, there was another study that 60% um, prefer sleeping in their own bed um, of people. And then another one, nearly 59% of men and 68% of women say they, their sleep quality suffers when they sleep with their partner. So wow. yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. So I think that, like I said, I, I, I'm an advocate for sleeping together if it works for both people. And, sure. and if, you know, before, you know, what does it mean by work? Well, have you, what is your bed? You know, you, you decide together, you know, do you wanting different things? Is there a way you could, you know, get your sleep cycles more, you know, in harmony in some way, you know, there's the temperature issues and, you know, blankets and bedding and the, your home, you know, there's different things. I mean, I'm not a sleep expert, but there's a whole thing around sleep hygiene and, you know, keeping your environment, you know, quiet and keep dimming the lights at night. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. research about how helping, you know, the routine to get ready for bed. But, but as a couple, like, you know, do you, can you make time if you're not going to be, um, you know, if you're not sleeping well together, are there some, can you troubleshoot a little bit to find out what could make it more comfortable for the two of you? That's the first step, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I presume I presume that um, you're not talking about people who uh, don't sleep together, but in separate locations, like houses or parts of the country. <laughs> I'm talking about people who are maybe not sleeping uh, uh, together in the same location, 
but in the same abode, in the same house. We're talking about twin yeah, like they're living together, things. but right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I, well, look, if you've been married or in a, in a monogamous relationship for any length of time, of course you know that you know everybody sleeps differently, and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes just rolling over your partner, rolling over in bed, can wake you up. Or, and of course, then there's always snoring. That's the classic thing that wakes people up. Right. Um, so there's lots of reasons why people might want to be in a, a separate bed or even a separate bedroom mm -hmm. um, in order to get a good night's sleep. And it, it's got nothing to do with love and romance. Absolutely. It's got to do with health. Yeah, yeah. And even temporarily, you might, you know, maybe one of you has a big, you know, bad cold, a lot of coughing. Maybe temporarily, you know, you move to another bedroom, certainly to give each other space for that, an illness, you know, an injury, maybe you might need to do that as a temporary measure. But it's also good to kind of be on the same page about what you see your bed is for. Like, right. what is the bedroom for? What is your bed for? Like, you know, a lot of the sleep experts say, reserve your bed for sleep and sex. But a lot of us, you know, are reading in bed. A lot of us are on our phones in bed. Some of us yeah. are watching videos. So can you come together as a couple? Like, are we gonna, you know, or what is the time that, you know, if you want to stay up watching a show, then then the bed is for sleeping and you need to go somewhere else. There's a lot of, basically what I'm encouraging people is to kind of troubleshoot and, and um, kind of problem solve together about how they can make their bed more of a sanctuary for both of them. Sure, to make it, yeah. make it equally comfortable, make it equally attractive. Um, right. You know, the one of the biggest, things that I've noticed among couples is uh, their kind of mental uh, uh, mental cycle or their, um, it's habits, habits. Uh, I have a friend who has to stay up late and watch whatever it is, Jimmy Kimmel or somebody, you know, the, the show, he, has to, he can't turn off the TV before midnight. Don't ask me why, he just can't. <laughs> but his wife goes to bed at nine o'clock. Mm. And... That's just the difference between the two of them. Now, there's a couple that should not have a TV in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, yeah, and they hope, don't. Well, so, I mean, they although I will, they I will say from experience, if you do have a TV in the bedroom, you need a sleep timer so that it automatically goes off and it's not on all night long. So uh, that mm. might be your is compromise. This, that's, that's a is solution. this from experience, Art? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, sleep timer uh, for 30 minutes and make sure that it goes off if somebody needs to have it on uh, when it's uh, a, a time to, to to climb into the yummy bed together, even if you just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And definitely no even phones. also... No, even cell, you... no cell phones in the bedroom. No cell phones in the bedroom, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I shut my... See, I know a lot of people... Yeah. I, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. <laughs> I... I, I I put it on my desk at uh, maybe six, seven at night. And uh, when I go shut my computer off before I go to bed, I may you know, take a quick look at it, but uh, cell phones would be very disruptive. If those calls, all those text messages that come in from theoretically friends, but who cares <laughs> at seven o'clock at night? And as a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting now that most of us don't have landlines, uh, uh, you know, you get an emergency call overnight, I'll have to wait for the morning. But other than that, uh, I think cell phones are very disruptive. Uh, anyway, there you go. Sleep timers and no cell phones. That's my rules. But Michelle, it, it's <laughs> all about, it, it's all about a, agreeing yeah. to coordinate your lifestyle, isn't it? So you can exactly. get a good sleep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and to honor each other's need, different needs. And, you know, sometimes it's like, needing to watch the show until midnight is that really a need is that person like but you know that's what they prefer so how can they work it so that you know she can get to bed at nine and when he you know comes into bed hopefully he's not you know making a lot of noise you, you know like all these kind of these transitions because i mean there's something about sleep that is just essential obviously to health and well-being but our own mood and that's one of the things that can be a real, you know, relationship killer is that, you know, when we're not sleeping well, we get, can get irritable and impatient. And obviously that does not help our relationships at all. So yeah. we really want to maximize, you know, our well-being, of course. And if it means that we sleep apart, then that's great if that works. But 
find time to snuggle in the morning maybe, or what's the time that you can both get in bed together and just, you know, not necessarily for sex, but sure for sex too, if you want that, but, but to have that kind of yummy, cuddly time, even if you're not sleeping together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Well, it seems, it seems to be the word, um, uh, uh, this is the first time we've done dozens of uh, these uh, conversations with you, but yummy is, I think yummy is the word. Okay, that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna actually use that to nod off tonight, thinking about yummy stuff. <laughs> Snuggling and yummy, yeah. <laughs> For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.